Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Terran vs Zerg where we find ourselves on Glittering Ashes. Spawning right here in the bottom left hand corner of the map and playing with the blue SCVs from Germany, we have Big Gabe himself and his name is Hero Marine. His opponent in the opposite corner playing with the red Zerg drones. A man with many nicknames. He's known as the Finisher, the Finnish Phenom. We used to call him the Night King as well. Back when, you know, before that final season of Game of Thrones was released, and the Night King was actually considered to be quite badass. He's also known, though, for many people as the GOAT. Of course, that means we have none other than Serral. Actually, fun story. Every once in a while, and I don't know if this is the same person leaving YouTube comments, but every once in a while, whenever I call him the finisher in a StarCraft cast, there's someone leaving comments below the video saying, Actually, Loco, actually, people from Finland are called Finns, not finishers. And I always facepalm a little bit whenever I read that. I don't have the heart to correct him, though. <laughs> I do, by the way, try to read most of the YouTube comments. There's a lot of them being left these days, but I do try to read the vast majority of them. I know a lot of YouTubers purposefully don't, just because of the fact that they get a lot of toxicity. Maybe I'm just lucky, I'm not exactly sure why. It's the same on Twitch. I, yeah, I never really get a whole lot of toxicity or hostility in general. I mean, every once in a while, but... Maybe for every 100 or so comments that I'm getting, 99% of them or 99 of them are, are very positive. So shout out to you guys for making an awesome community, not only on Twitch, but also right over here on YouTube. Either way, I've heard that this particular game right here is a bit of a banger. Sero versus Hero Marine, of course, some top level StarCraft 2. Both of these guys ridiculously good. Hero Marine actually, as we'll be making this video, he's currently the number one on the ladder in the world. Although, you gotta take that with a grain of salt, because we are at the beginning of the StarCraft 2 ladder season, and for example, Serral currently isn't even ranked. I guess Serral does most of his practice in custom games, or at the very least right now. He's just not ranked on the ladder. There is a certain amount of games you do have to play to be on the ladder. So, at the very least in Grandmaster League, I think you have to play like 30 games every two weeks in order to be eligible. And, well, I guess Serral hasn't been playing that much, or at the very least not on his main account. Either way, here Marine actually... Ooh, I love this little move. He pretended that he was gonna go back right there with the SCV. So the Overlord probably spotted the pathing over here as well. And now maybe the third base is gonna be kind of hard to get up and running. Yeah, I think if the Reaper would have run straight over here, maybe he could have prevented this. Although, nice grenade over there. Already baiting these links out. And actually getting two Zerkling kills right there is not bad whatsoever. I think that's probably what Hero Marine was aiming for. So, Glittering Ashes. Ridiculously long map. It takes a very long time for this unit to get across. Not bad whatsoever here, as far as the start goes for Hero Marine. Anyways, what I was trying to say is Hero Marine, especially by the end of the season, is perfectly capable to literally hold like a dozen accounts in Grandmaster League on EU. So this actually used to bother me back in the day, because I was trying to break into Grandmaster League as well. And then by the end of the season, all of these pro gamers, they would have multiple accounts in Grandmaster League, and obviously GM being limited to only 200 spots, it would very much so not be the top 200 anymore, but it would be like the top 75. Because of guys like Hero Marine that literally hold so many accounts in Grandmaster League. Apparently the reason for it, right? And this is a proper first world pro gamer problem. Apparently if you are extremely highly ranked as far as your MMR goes, so say you have 7000 MMR, queue times are so long that you're better off making a new account just because there's only so, mu uh, so many players that you can be facing. Like, say you're Hero Marine right now and you're trying to queue up on the ladder. You can only really queue into a handful of people unless you wait like 15 minutes. So if Serral is not online, if Showtime is not online, if Clem is not online, if Raynor isn't online, it's gonna take you a while to actually find a match. So apparently that's the reason why a lot of these guys do run with multiple accounts. I actually remember while this game gets underway, looks like we have... Okay, a bit of a Marine drop coming up, a triple CC start as well. I actually remember that Hero Marine at some point held two accounts. One of them sitting at the number one position in Europe called Big. And then another account in the number two position called the Gape. <laughs> Which I always thought was amazing. Apparently when the ladder becomes too easy for you, you start making your own challenges. Either way, looks like an Overlord was killed over here inside of the main base. At least we saw a bit of a supply block there, yeah, so Serral actually did see the double barracks there. He also did see the triple CC start, so he knows everything that he needs to know at this stage in the game. Not surprising to see such a macro-focused start from the both of them. Not only is that their, you know, it's their standard, so this is how they like to play the game most of the time, but it's also Glittering Ashes. This map really is very big. There's a lot of bases. 
Oftentimes the top left hand corner and, well, for example, the bottom right hand corner, they don't really come into play as often. But there's definitely potential there. And if you wanna, you know, if you wanna macro up, if you wanna, like, just push your advantage further, oftentimes it can be smart to actually expand rather than to attack. So, this is definitely the map where you can definitely, yeah. I said the word definitely like 12 times in three sentences. Anyways, this is definitely a map where you can definitely make the game go the distance if you wanted to. Bailing Nest coming up. Lair just about to finish as well for Serral, so he'll probably go into that bailing speed relatively soon. Again, a very safe start. He's gonna be able to transition towards the double upgrades here inside of those Evo Chambers relatively quickly as well. Love this position on the Evo Chambers. For a while we saw those Evo Chambers coming up right over here or so, and I, I personally was never a fan. This is obviously a lot less exposed, and it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Alright, so, here's those Marines showing up. There's actually not that many Zerklings available at this point. So maybe Gabe can force a cancel right here on that hatchery, although the Queens are now showing up. Still killing a lot of Zerklings, though. So I actually quite like this, uh, this move here. Despite the fact that he didn't kill the hatch. That was a, uh, well, a grand total of nine Zerklings going down so far in this game. Bailings, though, are now coming up. And once that bailing speed finishes, it's going to be a whole lot more difficult uh, to, uh, yeah, to harass with those marines. Already, that creep spread, right? Look at this. So, there's a lot of active creep tumors. This is the type of map that really rewards very high actions per minute. So already, Serral is sitting at like four, five, six hundred here. That's about ten buttons a second if we see him going up to the six hundred. It's kind of wild. Obviously, repeat rates on keyboards and stuff are definitely a thing, but. These Zerg players, they are, generally speaking, very, very rapid. Here, Marine, though, following this up right now with his own additional barracks. His 1-1 one, one is about the same time as the 1-1 one, one for the Zerg. So not too surprising there. Yeah, and everything right now is pointing towards a nice, strong mid-game for the both of them. Wouldn't be surprised to see a 4cc coming up pretty soon. Nice snipe right there by Big Gabe. Definitely getting the upper hand so far in those exchanges. There's the second factory, and there's the fourth command center as well. Are we gonna go Widow Mines? Yeah, for now we are. He'll probably go for the Drilling Claws upgrade pretty soon and then pump out those Widow Mines three at a time with a reactor on the second factory. So oftentimes Terrans at this point have to choose if they want to go Siege Tanks or if they want to go for uh, for Widow Mines. Actually, this playstyle right here... It doesn't really strike me as the, the Hero Marine playstyle, but he's very good at it, right? So Hero Marine very much so is a Parade Pusher. Meaning that, like, he loves pushing across the center of the map, just, you know, set his rally points to watch the other side and just continuously uh, pile on the pressure. Normally, it's guys like Bion and, for example, uh, for example, Clem, that are very good at this multitasking and this, like, continued drop harass. But Hermarine definitely showing us here that he's perfectly capable of doing that as well. This is where that tempo lead is acquired, right? So a couple of Widow Mines on over here. Nice targeting, even retargeting right there with that Widow Mine. Getting the clump of Banelinks, harassing over here as well. Very, very, very stellar play here so far by Hero Marine. Serral has looked pretty much unstoppable over the last couple of weeks in a lot of these matchups, especially ZVT and ZVP are just looking insane. Although I think that these, well, these Marines apparently are gonna have a hard time coming home. Obviously no critical amounts of damage taken here whatsoever by Serral, but there was a little, wasn't there a little cleaning bot over here? Oh man. I guess it got taken care of as well by one of those Bane Links. Hive is already coming up. Drilling Claw is already coming up here as well for Hero Marine. So indeed, he is going to be able to pump out those Widow Mines nice and quickly. Using a, a Siege Tank right here just to keep safe. It already fired at a couple of Bane Links that were trying to go in for a roll by earlier. But yeah, this is looking good here for Hero Marine. Even being 10 supply up. Not bad whatsoever. Fourth base. Has landed as well. He's going to morph that into a planetary fortress. This choke point is not something that a Zerg player can push through. And this Widow Mine now also has 20 confirmed kills to its name. All right. There's that Lurker then coming up, though. Terran players' worst nightmares. They, they, really, uh, they really aren't a big fan of the current Lurker meta, it seems. Can't blame you, though. Lurkers are indeed pretty annoying. Oftentimes what happens... Ooh, okay. Oftentimes what happens is that Terran players try to build that tempo lead, right? Over the course of like 15 minutes. 
They'll try and like push back the creep and slow down the Zerg player ever so slightly. They try and do as much harassment as possible, keeping as many units alive. And then you've built up that tempo lead and then the lurkers come out and you just can't really push very effectively anymore. Okay, that's a very ambitious plane. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's like, no, no worries, guys. We've got this, no problem. With the mines over here as well. Retargeting once again by Gable, though this time around it may have been ever so slightly too greedy. Oh, that ambitious medevac, though. Apparently, it's nowhere to be seen anymore, but at the very least, it did unload the marines. I thought maybe it could deal a bit more damage than this. Only two workers going down. Those, uh, those were actually the two first workers going down in this game as well. Adrenal glands at the 10-minute mark. Ranged upgrade for the lurkers, too. Yeah, Serral just shouting, Come on, hit me if you want to. Soon I'll have lurkers out. As long as my eco is good enough, I don't really care about how much damage you do. So, he's got 91 workers at this point. 81 for Terran, though. So, Terran definitely also has a very healthy economy. Okay. Nice baits right there once again. I actually love here what Hero Marine is doing, though. Just baiting all of those units into the Widow Mine hits. Oh. D's not getting the biggest traits, but... Still some good value. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was actually kind of hard to spot. Serral's trying to run the, the one Zerkling forward that was being targeted. But apparently Hero Marine manually retargeted right there as well. Vipers at this point around. Okay, good splits right there. Very good splits, actually. Picking up the affected Metavex. This one apparently had enough HP to actually stay alive. So Parasitic Bomber deals 120 damage. If I'm not mistaken, the Metavex is 150 max life. So Hero Marine make the executive call that... That goo that was flying around the wings didn't really matter all too much. Maybe the Marines inside of that plane were a little bit concerned, but not Hero Marine. Not the commanding officer. My god, Hero Marine is actually going wild this game. Doing so much multitasking. Very, very nicely done. So weaker Zerg players would have already been dead. He's even now stimming into those mer Oh my god, he's even killing the lurkers! Alright, very nicely done right here by Hero Marine, man. Okay. Yeah, so weaker Zerg players would have already died, right? At this point in the game, it would already be GG. Which is the main reason why a lot of tournament matches don't really last any longer than like 12 minutes. If you're not as good at the game as Serral here, because Serral has even been struggling, right? If you're not as good at the game, uh, or, at good at, or as good at the game, there you go. Struggling on my words today. Um, yeah, you can just be absolutely demolished by this insane multitasking. Now he's becoming a little bit overly ambitious, though. Yeah, that was a lot of units there for the Terran player going down. He's still continuously dropping. Those were a couple of changelings hiding in the back of the main base of... Uh, <laughs> or I guess the fifth base right here of Serral. Probably wanted to send those across the map. Alright. So, the second set of Lurkers is coming up. This time around, they already have the Adaptive Talons upgrade as well, so that's the Burrow Speed upgrade. So these are very strong Lurkers. And I wouldn't mind seeing him transition at this point towards some... I don't know, like either Liberators or Ghosts. I think Ghosts are extremely good. Honestly, if you would have covered up the nicknames at this point, right, and you wouldn't have shown me Hero Marine, I probably would have guessed Bjorn. So finally the Ghosts are coming up. But Bjorn plays this super aggressive, drop-heavy style. And then he's usually kind of reluctant to switch into Ghosts. So Hero Marine is switching it to Ghost here, but it felt to me, or it felt to me like he was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to, and then, you know, he was kind of forced to anyway. The problem with that Ghost Transition... Ghost Transition... Wait, no, it's not the Sabaton song. This is awkward. Uh, the problem with that... Oh! <laughs> the problem with the Ghost Transition is that it really slows down the pacing of the game. So you can really see here that, I mean, we still see some drop harassment going on, right? And there's still definitely some multitasking. But you've kind of just admitted here as a as a Terran player that your drop harass is likely not going to win you the game. So you're going to go for a more reliable answer in the form of those ghosts. Alright. Marauders over here not really getting a whole lot done. Saro actually still alive, by the way. Like, it's so easy to just be destroyed at this point in the game. How many workers did he actually lose? Two. Only two drones. So despite the fact that he's lost 343 Zorklings, he's also had a very, very stellar economy here for the most part. So even though this looked extremely good for Hero Marine early on, it's definitely, uh... 
yeah, a good situation for Serral to be in. I mean, he doesn't really care how he gets here too much as long as he gets to this stage in the game, right? So this is his comfort zone. Just defend, 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 and then once he's maxed out, once he gets to that upgrade lead, that's when he likes to go for the aggression. Okay, this time around, a lot of damage being done. Good kiting backwards as well, using that planetary fortress as an anchor, so 10 kills already on the planetary itself. Ghosts, they have an ability called Snipe. Or actually, it's called Steady Targeting. It's that first one right over there. Um, and basically, they can uh, they can deal a lot of damage, especially to units at a lot of range. So they can, at a, at a range, clear out those lurkers quite effectively. They can also target fire down... Uh, well, there's one. <laughs> they can also uh, target fire down, well, every other Zerg unit. I think they can target biological units with it, meaning pretty much everything. That was wonderful. That's a new way in which Saro has been doing his splits. So he hold positions the rest of his army and then follows the line, clicks the Zerkling that's affected and then run that Zerkling forward. You've got to be extremely stellar with your targeting if you do it that way, but... I would probably pull the wrong Zerkling. <laughs> and then I accidentally lose my own stuff! Speaking of losing my stuff! Don't want to lose those ghosts! Ay 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 ay. Good trade right there for the finisher. And no, don't correct me, guy, in the comment section. The finish phenom. I think we call him Lord of the Circuit as well at some point. That's a long time ago. The WCS Circuit. He won basically all of those. Back in like 2018. Alright, so Hero Marine is maxed out. He's got himself a lot of command centers. And the creep spread is actually looking kind of mediocre. I mean, yes, the map is huge. But there's really not that much creep spread here in general. So I'm still really liking this position, even a kill right there on the hatchery. I'm still really liking this position for Hammery. It's just that, like, I've, I've casted quite a few Serral games recently, and he really hasn't lost any. <laughs> I know he's lost a couple of tournaments here and there, and I could cast those games as well, but... It's, uh... Quite remarkable. Okay, Planetary over here does end up going down. I guess what I'm trying to say is that most of the time, whenever I see Serral lose, it's in the earlier stage of the game. Really? Okay, I was gonna say, there's a... a <laughs> there's a missile turret right over there. Oh. Um, most of the time he loses in the earlier stage of the game, so if he is still alive right now... I'm starting to become a little bit concerned for Hero Marine, but so far apparently Hero Marine feeling perfectly comfortable playing this game. Getting some very good trades in as well. Going into the 3-3 upgrades quite late, actually. Actually, no, 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 never mind. That's the... The mech upgrade. Stuff for a second, this was another upgrade right here as well for uh, the biological units, but it's the building armor. I was gonna say, that 3-3 is already done. It does look kind of red-ish, right? It's kind of funny, actually. Maybe it's just because the other upgrade is right next to it. So that's the building armor, and that's the additional range right here for missile turrets, but also for planetary fortresses. So these are like proper late-game upgrades, not things that we normally see early on. Alright. Serral at this point has so much money, that they can just throw it at planetary fortresses. It's an effective way to get rid of it, but also very expensive because the planetary itself is much cheaper to produce, including the command center, uh, than those banelings. But obviously it's like very, very annoying now. Zerkling is burrowed underneath as well, meaning that like a follow-up uh, command center that's flying on over in this direction is not actually going to be able to settle down in that location. Without scanning, at least. Still, Hero Marine, probably not too concerned. Oh my god, getting once again some beautiful hits there on those Widow Mines. Very nicely done. A couple of ghosts do get surrounded here, which kind of sucks. Apparently that one, okay, almost made it out of life, but Serral decided to retarget. Yeah, now he's gonna get blocked. It's, it's blocked, right? That's what he hears right now. Actually, that is assuming he's using the normal Terran announcer. He's probably using the, the Loco announcer, right? I'm, sh <laughs> I'm sure Hero Marine is using the Loco announcer in-game. You can have me shout at your games. <laughs> Actually, a really fun project. Wish I could make some updates to it. That'll be fun. Anyways, look at this. This is so much, so much annoyance. Forcing so much multitasking here from the Terran player. And so far, it seems like Sarah is starting to push ahead a little bit. I'm looking primarily here at the banks. And he does have a lot more money here, especially as far as the gas goes. 
Great Aspire just about to finish up as well. That's going to allow the Zerk player to morph Corruptors into Brute Lords. I love this, actually. Jimmy and Michael. Get him! Yeah, use your combat drugs. They end up killing a hatchery. This one over here is still being denied, by the way. I think that may have been a bit of a, an SCV kill roll by somewhere as well. There's a lot of blue spots on the minimap. But those are all pretty much changelings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Sarah keeps on dropping as many of these changelings as he can. I've noticed him do that actually in a bunch of his other games as well. I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, it's nice vision, obviously. But oftentimes they're also just kind of idling on the creep, like right over here. Probably was supposed to shift Kudos forward, but he never did. Anyways, the base over here is landed this time around. It's not a planetary fortress, so that's a bunch of Terran SCVs and mules going down. Liberators are added into the mix as well here for our Terran player in blue. I like the idea. Creep spread, by the way, still, still really not looking that great. What if it's going to be like a mass brute lore transition here? I know it's not a very common way of playing, but definitely does have potential. Serral really using that Zerk mobility right now. These ghosts, man, they have to be so careful. If, like, a group of Banelings would come rolling down that ramp over there, it could be an absolute disaster. Liberator over here, getting a couple kills in. To confirm, killed Stuart's name right now, unless these mineral patches get... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this drone laughs in the face of danger. feel like it should be getting shot at, but apparently just barely not. Abduction with the Viper, probably. Yep. So the queens are apparently the ones that will clear this out. With the ranged upgrade, as we saw in previous matches on this map, you can hang out very far away, and it's actually very difficult for the Zerg player to get rid of it without air units. Okay. Ghost cloaking here. How many ghosts are we on? 17 ghosts. There's actually... Um, I, I've, hold up. I'm backing up for just a second. Sorry. There's a lot of action going on in this game. Maybe it's just the... Yeah, I think it was just a little bit of aggression over here. And a couple of additional SCVs were just being killed as the game progressed. So despite the fact that we were already a little bit later on into the game, I guess a couple of SCVs died. Yeah, I thought maybe there were an additional 18 that ended up going down. Anyways, looking at the supply count right now, though. So this is that moment when the Liberator gets abducted, and it's just one Zerkling continuously getting kills here. As we look at the supply count right now, though, Hero Marine is actually kind of broke. He's got 150 minerals, so he can't really remake a whole lot. So these units he's losing right now are starting to become extremely expensive. Serral's still happily sitting at a nice bank. Although these snipes over here are amazing, though. Those ghosts are getting so much work done. I would love to see some infestors here as well for Serral. I feel like a fungal growth would be amazing. That siege tank from the early game? No, it's actually a different one. This one has got zero kills. I think the other one had four. Anyways. It's gonna start firing away at the hatchery over here, too. Serral does have newly acquired bases all the way in the bottom right. Liberator and a siege tank over here actually denying this, this expansion. This is actually kind of cool. Not a combo of units I've really seen. Is that the OG Siege Tank? I think it might be. It's got 16 kills. Alright, so that base over there was killed. And even though Hero Marine really didn't have much of an army, he still found himself in a pretty good spot. Love this, actually. Another thing that Bjorn does all the time. So once again, this would definitely... If, if this was a blindfolded Terran play, I would definitely assume this was Bjorn. Anyways, that's something that Bjorn does all the time, where he's leaving a couple of those stray units behind. I love this, though. Denying this expo? Very, very cool. Can Lurker shoot at it across the... Like, he can't really move the Spore Crawler over there either, right? He really needs to get rid of this. Okay, he will. He will. Still, the Liberator. Being annoying. Okay. So there are Infestors now. Infestors have a skill called Fungal Growth. Fungal Growth on Ghosts would be amazing. Swarm forces Sarah using the Abathur announcer, apparently. Okay, here's that infester, here's that infester, here's that infester! Oh god. Very, very close. I think it's gonna try and go around this army. Oh my god. Yep, there's the fungal, there's the fungal, there's the fungal! That's a sick fungal right there by Serral! Whew, looked like the ghost though. Barely managed to get out of there. That was very close. 
Remember when fungal was like a fool on a root? They changed it at some point to be a slow rather than a root. If that would have been all those units rooted in place for, well, the full duration of the spell, um, <laughs> that would have been every single one of those goes down. Anyways, at the very least, this is gonna put another uh, point on the board right here for Saro. Army in the top left, denying another expo. Our Marine still pushing through the center of the map. I love what Gabe is doing here. Like, the creep spread never, never really got very far. In many of these instances, Serral is just completely pushing the creep towards, like, the natural expo of the Terran. Anyways, Lurkers once again over here as well in a very nice position. That's a bunch more of dead SCVs. Luckily here for the Terran player, he does have a couple of medevacs, so a few of these units are going to be able to get on out of there. He's denying an expo over here, but the planetary... Or actually, the, the command center, that orbital command, it does end up going down. Now it's not just going to be a Zirkling burrowed in position, it's going to be a Lurker, so even more annoying. We do need to scan over here, though. Liberator over here, trying to be a nuisance. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of Corruptors added into the mix to get rid of those Liberators, but also the Medivex. 30 drones right now, though, over at these eight mineral patches. I think a bunch of them are maybe still transferring over in this direction. Serral is starting to run out of money. I mean, he's still maxed out, yes. He still has 500, 200, or 2,500 in the bank, so he does still definitely have a decent amount of stuff. But it's starting to dry up. Okay, he's decided to go for a big move over here once again. That huge fungal, man! That absolute infester MVP! Getting so much work done. ay yeah, yeah, yeah. It does actually get killed right there by a Liberator. Even falls into the, the golden mineral patches over there. Ghost over here. Two ghosts. That one had 30 kills. That one, I couldn't actually glance it right there at the bottom right hand corner, but... These two ghosts, they were getting some work done. Alright, so where is Hero Marine mining right now? Okay, he's once again sending SCVs on over towards the left side. Lurker, trying to be as annoying as possible, and once more, it's blocked. I don't know what the loco announcer says when something is blocked. You can't put that there, probably. <laughs> In a very excited voice. <laughs> Am I mocking my own announcer? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Serral is still, well, long distance mining over at this expansion, I suppose? This expo right now is being cut off, though, so Serral is actually out of money. Like, he's long-distance mining, and he's got some mineral fields over here in the center. But there's not much income right here for the, the finisher. The Finnish Phenom. The Lord of the Circuit. The, the Night King. For none of those players, there's, <laughs> there's any income. Okay, Hero Marine, heading on over towards the bottom right. I think it makes sense, but again, pesky Zirkling over here, Burr out. Hero Marine is going to be able to get rid of that guy. That way, Serral doesn't even know that there's going to be a base over here. I love this denial over here. This is fantastic. Like the the abusing of the terrain there. Really good stuff. Although this Liberator, not meant for this world. Gets abducted, immediately sniped by the Hydrolisks. Two more Infestors are coming up. So I was like, well, those, that Infestor from earlier did really well. What's better than one Infestor? <laughs> two Infestors. So <laughs> he's making two of them right now. Smart man. Makes a lot of sense. Hatchery taken in the top left-hand corner. Command center taken all the way in the bottom right. Hero Marine's supply count really isn't looking that good. But most of that supply of his is caught up in SCV... Or, sorry, in, in, in units. And even though he doesn't have a lot of SCVs anymore, so he doesn't have a lot of mining, he can use those, uh, those mules very, very nicely. Still getting a lot of very cost-efficient trades as well. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Losing so many more minerals here is Serral. Losing some more gas as well. Gas doesn't really matter too much at this stage in the game. Well, it does for the Zerk player, I guess. But for the Terran, it doesn't really matter. It's those mineral traits that are absolutely awesome. Putting a sensor tower over here as well. The income actually is going to be really good here for Hero Marine. Yeah, it's because of those yellow mining machines. Look at that. 2,200 minerals a minute here. Here's the Infestors! Oh god, I've seen this before. Oh. Missile turret apparently granted detection of the Infestor right over there. Infestor over here as well! Oh my god, once again a huge fungal! My god, dude. Those fungals have been insane. Anyways, Marine drop over here on the other side of this crevice. 
that the correct word? I think it is. Oh my god. Well, it's getting some kills is what I was trying to say. But the last SCVs are all the way down here at the bottom. Now there's Hydras as well, so I've got a feeling... The Orbital Command isn't even really going to be able to get on out of here. The SCV is also in a lot of trouble, and both players lose even more economy. We're now at 166. I did math in a video. There you go. Uh, 166 killed workers, even though the first one didn't die until, like, the 12-minute mark, it felt like. The first two. It was that brave medevac drop. <laughs> Ghosts are actually running out of energy. Uh, they are running out of energy. It's very dangerous. Okay, they do move back to the safety of the planetary. At the same time, newly acquired Medivac, filled with Marines, move them over towards the top left-hand corner. And I think a Hero Marine is going to be able to kill another base. Serral doesn't have mining anymore, but neither does, 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 does Hero Marine. I mean, he's long-distance mining here and there. He's getting a bit of mineral income over here from these very dry mineral fields. Only 15 minerals remaining in this one, so a few trips. And then it's going to be gone. There it is. Sarah's gonna try and take this high ground base. Does he still have a... Yeah, he does still have two Vipers. Base on the left side never really happened, hey? Oh my god. Follow-up scan as well, just for the final two hit points of that Lurker. Alright. There we go, the yellow mining machines ag uh, again. Dropping from the high heavens. Okay. Oh, good Widow Mine hit right over there. Oh my god, very good Widow Mine hit right over there. Okay, the Ghost getting some good hits in. Serral reacquiring that hatchery on the low ground. Here we go, though. Zerg reinforcements coming in from the right side. I think you might have to pick up and get on out of there. Yep, a couple of the Marines sadly had no place inside of the plane. And that means that once again, SCVs will end up going down and so will those mules. It's starting to feel a little bit desperate here for Gabe. He's got one SCV and a Dream. 30 supply, though. His supply count, actually, as far as army goes, is still very solid. This is where the real difference is in the supply count. Serral still has, like, 40 drones. Mules are good, but you do need mineral patches. And at this point, uh, there's, there's, there's 160 minerals right over here. Honestly, one mule would probably not be a bad idea, just to mine it out. But at this point, Serral knows that his opponent needs a new base. Swarm forces under He's denying the expo on the left. He also has vision, or he had vision previously, of the expo right here on the right. Those are really the only two locations that the Terran player can go to. Serral right now, already acquiring the base in the top left-hand corner once again as well, which I really like. So even if... Somehow, some way, Terran kills that. He can reposition those drones towards the top left-hand corner. Because Hero Marine has been... Yeah, he's been harassing him very well. He doesn't have enough army anymore to be in two places at once. He's got, <laughs> he's got one mule, one SCV, three medevacs, and 11 ghosts. Oh, oh. That's one ghost going down. Seven drones in total, though. So the counter to ghosts... Oh my god, no, not again, not again, not again, not again. The counter to ghosts is usually... Lings and Banes. Serral right now remaxing here, or well, remaxing. He's, he's getting 18 Zerk Links! Oh god! Hitting a very nice fungal there. Hero Marine sees what happens, he realizes that those planes wouldn't be able to go home. And with that, he decided to leave with a GG. Very well played right there.